Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. And that's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, our postman, Mel Blank, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. For your Thursday night enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. With extra flavor in the blend because of choice Latin American coffee, skillfully combined. Extra flavor in the cup because Radiant Roast develops the full flavor of every coffee bean. And the result is that today, more people buy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. As we look in at the Burns home today, we find Gracie about to answer the door buzzer. Coming. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> well, Mr. Postman, how are you today? Oh, I'm my usual magnificent self, happy as a lark. And like the lark, spring makes me want to burst into song. Oh, well, go right ahead. Thank you. Cement mixer, putty putty. <laughs> Cement mixer, putty putty, a vote, a Cement mixer, putty putty? Who wrote that? The Federal Housing Administration? Oh, I don't know who wrote it, but he must have been thinking of my wife and myself. Really? Yes. She's built like a cement mixer, and in her hands, I'm putty putty. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm glad you feel like singing. The rain didn't dampen your spirits any. Oh, no, I love to walk along with the wind and the rain in my hair. Mm, I don't think your hair would hold much rain. <laughs> it is a little thin on top. My wife says if I get completely bald, she's going to leave me. Oh, well, you better get busy and do something. I am. Whenever she's not looking, I pull out a few more. <laughs> But here I stand talking when I haven't even given you your mail. I have quite a stack of it for you today. <gasps> Uh-oh, those first-of-the-month bills. I mustn't let my husband see these. Yes, Mr. Burns might raise merry old Ned, if you'll pardon my profanity. <laughs> well, I'll hide the bills here in my apron pocket and then rush him along to the office before he's had a chance to discover them. When my wife doesn't want me to see something, she makes sure my eyes are closed. Well, how does she do that? With a left hook and a right cross. <laughs> well, good luck, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> George sees the bills for that Easter outfit I bought. He'll blow his top. I have to get him out of the house before... Good morning, Gracie. Oh, good morning, dear. Breakfast ready? Oh, George, you don't want to eat here. The food's terrible. <laughs> huh? Why don't you stop at the corner and get some of that wonderful drugstore cooked food? But I never eat at the drugstore. Oh, they have a nice lunch counter. You'll find it right between men's ready-to-wear and the used car section. <laughs> Gracie, why are you trying to get me out of the house? You've got something up your sleeve. Oh, I hid them in a better place. <laughs> oh! Hid what? Uh, <laughs> Gracie, what's that bulge in your apron oh, pocket? Please, George, I'm sensitive about my figure. <laughs> that has nothing to do with your figure. Looks like a pocket full of letters. That's just what it is, letters. I'm getting ready to make alphabet soup. <laughs> Let me see those. Holy smoke, look at this stack of bills. Oh, now, George, don't get excited. They're just bills for necessary household expenses. The telephone, electricity, water. The top one is from Saks Fifth Avenue. That's the gas bill. <laughs> Gracie, we get our gas from the gas company. Well, I've decided to take our business elsewhere. Did you ever smell that stuff they were sending us? <laughs> <laughs> 
I suppose Saks has gas that smells good. I am now cooking with Chanel. <laughs> I'd just like to ask you one question. All right. How does F- uh, Saks Fifth Avenue get the gas into our pipes? Well, so much for the bill. I see. <laughs> now, just a minute. You're not fooling anybody. Here's one from my magnum. I suppose that's the water bill. Let me see it. Oh, no, no, no. This is a personal letter. Personal letter from my magnum? Oh, we correspond all the time. He, he's an old sorority brother of mine. <laughs> Gracie. Well, if you doubt me, I'll read it to you. Uh, dear Gracie, having a wonderful time, wish you were here. Yours truly, I, Magnet. <laughs> Gracie. Take a letter, George. Dear I. Dear I. <laughs> Look, this has gone far enough. Let me see that personal letter. I thought so. One dress, $88. Oh, he shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Gracie, why must you always lie to me? Don't you know that if you told me the truth, you'd have my respect? You'd have my admiration? Yeah, but I wouldn't have any clothes. <laughs> this is the limit. Gracie, this dress goes back. Oh, I can't take it back, George. Why? 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 Uh, why? Why, yeah, why? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Why? Yeah, you, well... Why? Uh, George. Yes? You see, the dress isn't really for me at all. Uh, it's, um, it's for Bill Goodwin. I doubt if it will fit him <laughs> Oh, well, what I mean is It's for Bill's girl, Alice He didn't have the cash So he charged it on my account Bill's girl, Alice huh? Oh, a lovely girl They're engaged, you know Bill bought her this dress for Easter I see Yes, yes Some girls get nice things The rest of us Oh, well, I'm not complaining <laughs> I have my health <laughs> well, hiya, Burgess I had my help We were just talking about you, Bill uh-huh. How's Alice? Uh, uh, Bill, well, let's go out to the kitchen and have a cup of Maxwell House coffee George wants to be alone No, he doesn't He wants to ask Bill a question How's Alice, Bill? Alice? Yeah Oh, she's fine <gasps> Oh, I'll be darned. <laughs> you mean you really have a girl named Alice? Well, to be exact, George, I have five girls named Alice. Well, I'm talking about the Alice you're engaged to. Oh, well, that narrows it down to three. <laughs> <laughs> you see, George, Alice is a very common name. Now, I have five. Some girl collectors have even more. Girl collectors? Yes, it's a little hobby of mine that keeps me out of the pool room. <laughs> I have one of the largest collections in Hollywood And some of my specimens are very rare Uh, In fact, I'm the only collector in the United States Who has a genuine silver digger Silver digger? That's a girl who digs you only for car fare (laughs) Of course, the fellow I envy is a collector in Burbank He has a northern Emmy Lou Yes, well, uh, they usually come from the South. Oh, yes, sure. The <laughs> South, you see. I pronounce my T's. Uh-huh. I, uh, <laughs> now it's your turn to yes, say something. I yes. offered to swap him four Genevieves and a pair of Helens for her, but he refused. Bill, uh, I'm right. only interested in one girl, the Alice you bought an Easter outfit for. Oh, well, I didn't buy any Alice in outfit, George. I thought so. What's this all about? Well, Gracie ordered a lot of clothes and tried to pretend she hadn't. Why didn't she come to me? I'd have bought her an Easter outfit. Sure, an egg and a package of dye. <laughs> uh, Bill, I, I think you better leave. Gracie and I are going to have a little family fight. Okay, scream if you need help, George. <laughs> Goodbye, comedian. So long, caveman. Mm. <laughs> so, you lied to me about the dress? Yes, dear, I lied to you. Bill didn't buy the dress for Alice. I thought so. Meredith Wilson bought it. <laughs> Meredith Wilson bought a girl a dress? Yeah, oh, he's become very worldly. The other day I heard that he went to the burlesque show. Someone was pulling your leg. I'll bet it was Meredith. He's, <laughs> he's become very worldly. Oh, stop this nonsense. You don't believe Meredith bought Alice a dress, huh? I don't believe Meredith even knows a girl named Alice. You're lying and you know it. George, if I'm lying, may that chandelier fall from the ceiling this very minute. Hello, all. Oh, let's step in the next room, shall we? 
Meredith, I'm glad you dropped in. How's Alice? Alice? You mean Alice back in Mason City? Yeah, 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 that's the one. Oh, she's fine. You see, George? Funny thing you're mentioning her. I uh, got a letter from home yesterday, and Alice just had eight kittens. (laughs) I say. Well, don't the darndest things happen in Iowa? (laughs) So Alice is a cat. Oh, sure. Don't see how she could have kittens otherwise. (laughs) And as far as you know, Alice doesn't wear dresses. Nope. Of course, I'm not home all the time. (laughs) Anyway, you didn't buy her a dress and charge it to Gracie's account. Why, no. In the extremely unlikely event that I'd buy a cat a dress, I would gladly assume the cost of such a purchase myself. Yes, that's what I heard. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> However, if you know of some deserving puss who would like such... We don't, <laughs> <have it. laughs> Well, I don't hesitate to call on me if you happen to run across one. We won't. We won't, Meredith. Goodbye. 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 A cat in a dress. Mm. By George. Still, I can't say it would attract me, especially. <laughs> out, 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 out. Well, I've had all of this I can stand. I'm going to the drugstore and get some breakfast. Oh, dear, may I use the car while you're gone? You may not. I'm punishing you for all those lies you've told. Oh, yes, dear. So I order you not to take the car out of the driveway. Yeah. Well, I promise, dear. And stick to it. Goodbye. And I won't take the car out of the driveway either. I'll take it over the lawn and across the sidewalk. <laughs> How does that man put up with me? It's springtime in the Rockies with Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. Say, Meredith, it seems to me I've heard that tune you're playing on and off now for a good many years. Guess you have, Bill. Springtime in the Rockies was composed 23 years ago, and I think it'll always be among America's favorite songs. It's not only a sweet, singable melody, but the idea behind the song, even its title, brings to mind wonderful pictures of one of the most beautiful sections of all America. Yes, that's true. Springtime in the Rocky Mountains is certainly one of the really great sights in this country. Cherry blossoms bloom against a green backdrop of majestic pine and hemlock, and in the distance, snow dome peaks tower in the clouds. No wonder it's an unforgettable part of our American scene. And you know, I can't help thinking, too, how it's no wonder that Maxwell House coffee has become so much a part of the American scene. But Maxwell House is so richly mellow that its extra good flavor is bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in America. You see, Maxwell House is a skillful blend of these premium Latin American coffees, each chosen for its own distinctive contribution. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice Latin American coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. The result is a blend so flavorful, so satisfying, that Northeast, South, and West 
Coffee lovers agree, Maxwell House is good to the last drop. Gracie took the car out against George's orders and promptly smashed up the fender. She's at home now, dreading the return of her lord and master. Uh Uh-oh, here he comes. If he sees the car, I'm really in trouble. Gracie! Oh, hello, George. I was in the kitchen fixing you some lamb chops because I know you love lamb chops, don't you? The least I can do for my darling handsome husband is fix him some lamb chops, isn't it? (laughs) <laughs> so I've been fixing lamb chops You saw the car, I saw huh? the car, yes yeah. <laughs> I thought I told you not to take it out of the driveway Oh, I didn't, dear Then how did the fender get smashed in? Well And don't tell me the one about the windstorm that blew a tree over on the car <laughs> I heard that one in January Oh, well Or the one about the aeroplane that flew too low I heard that in November Oh Well, the people next door called in a carpenter to mend their side gate And, and he, he was near side Instead of hammering on the gate, he hammered on our fender <laughs> August? June <laughs> No, you're right August was the one about the earthquake September <laughs> This time for a novelty, let's settle for the truth I want to know how, how a fender could get that smashed up Looks like an elephant sat on it. It looks like... Why, George, you saw it. <laughs> huh? You saw the elephant come up on our driveway and sit on the fender. Gracie. You know, he must have escaped from the circus that's in town. Let's sue them. Look, I know there's a circus in town. But do you want me to believe that one of their elephants sat on our fender? Well, I hoped you might. It was your idea originally. <laughs> this is the biggest whopper yet. An elephant sat on the fender. Well... Gracie, you've forgotten how to tell the truth. Lying with you has become a disease. A disease? Yes. Keep it up and you'll lose me. The kindest, sweetest, most generous husband a woman ever had. Must be a contagious disease. <laughs> oh, Stop. Gracie, what's wrong with you? Three o'clock and you've been tossing around all night Go to sleep Oh, I'm afraid to I've been having nightmares about telling lies You scared me Well, I'm glad I did Now, quiet down and go to sleep. Yes, dear. Gracie. Oh, Gracie. Oh, hello, Bill. My, but you're handsome. That's a lie. You know I'm ugly. Oh, but, Bill, you have such lovely curls and those dimples. That's right. Make fun of me because I'm bald-headed and have two warts on my face. But, Bill, you are handsome. Lies. Lies. Nothing but lies. (laughs) George! George, I told the truth and he wouldn't believe me. Gracie's a liar. 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 Come in. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Oh, good morning, Mr. Postman. I hope your wife hasn't been beating you again. What? My beautiful, delicate, precious little bride, Bertha? Why, she's as gentle as a lamb. But she does beat you. That's a lie. I love my wife. Even now, my heart cries out for her. (laughs) Bertha! (laughs) Bertha! But, Mr. Postman! Goodbye, Mr. 
Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep lying. George, George, I told the truth again. Gracie's a liar. 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 Good morning, all. Oh, hello, Meredith. Would you like to come to dinner tonight? Sorry, Gracie. Errol Flynn and I are taking a couple babes out. <laughs> what? This is my regular night to give Errol a lesson in romance. But, Meredith, you're shy. You're bashful. You don't know anything about lovemaking. That's a lie. Us boys from Georgia are natural-born lovers. Well, not from Georgia. You were born and raised in Mason City, Iowa. Lies, you all. <laughs> lies, you all. Nothing but lies, you all. Lies, you all. Well, George, Nothing but lies. George, that time I know I told the truth. Honest, I did. Ha! Gracie's a liar. 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 Oh, George was right. Lying has become a disease with me, a terrible disease. I'm ready to operate, Dr. Goodwin. What's the nature of her ailment, Dr. Burns? Enlargement of the falsehood glands. A complete prolapse of the truth. Ooh. This is going to be a very painful operation. Your instruments are ready, Dr. Burns. Very well. Axe. <laughs> Axe. Blowtorch. <laughs> Blowtorch. No, please, stop! Dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> Cement mixer. Cement mixer. Putty. Putty. Oh, help, 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 help. No help. Please don't stop. Stop. Gracie, 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 wake up. What's wrong with you? Oh, George, I just had the most terrible dream. I'll never tell a lie again as long as I live. Hmm, must have been quite a dream. Oh, it was terrible. I'm still scared. Ask me some questions right now so I can tell the truth and get rid of this awful feeling. Okay. That delicious apple pie we had last night. You said you made it. Did you? No. Meredith Wilson made it. <laughs> Ask me another one. Uh, I gave you $10 to pay the gas bill. Did you pay it? No. I spent it on a permanent. Ask me another one. How old are you? Well, I feel much better now. Let's get up. <laughs> Okay. You're really going to keep your promise to tell the truth, huh? Oh, you bet. No more lies for me. Well, you're, you're not even going to flatter me anymore when you want something? From now on, I only tell the truth. That a girl. Remember how you said last week that Charles Boyer was a second-rate lover compared to me? Why, Charles Boyer makes me look like a bum. You said it. <laughs> of course, I'm not bad, mind you. I said, of course, I'm not bad, mind you. I heard you. Just that I don't compare to a really great lover like Boy A. You said it. That a girl, stick to the truth. Yeah, I will. Uh, believe me, it's better than those lies you were telling. I'm really proud of you, Gracie. Oh, thank you, George. And as a reward, could I take the car this morning? I guess so. Where are you going? Well, Bill Goodwin called last night and wants me to drive him somewhere. He said his car got out of whack. Okay. <laughs> That's the switch, you know. <laughs> Bill's car getting out of whack. Usually it's the whack who getting gets out, out of his, his car. car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Drive carefully, Gracie. And remember, no more lies. No more lies, George. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> Gee, it's swell of you to drive me out to the circus grounds, Gracie. Oh, glad to do it, Bill. But what do you do out there? The circus doesn't open until Monday. Oh, well, they're shooting a scene from my new picture out there. Oh, is that the one you're doing with Lana Turner? Yes. In the picture, you see, she's madly in love with me, mm -hmm. but for years, I won't even look at her. <laughs> yeah, I think they're calling it the green years. <laughs> well, are you a circus performer in the picture? Well, I have a booth on the midway. I stick my head through a hole in the canvas, and people throw baseballs at it. Oh, my goodness. If you hit me once, you get $10. If you hit me twice, you get $20. And three times gets the grand prize. What's that? A cup of Maxwell House coffee. Oh, but Bill, if you get hit in the head with three baseballs, won't you be a little goofy? Well, sure, I'd have to be to give away my Maxwell House coffee. <laughs> that's the best there is, Gracie. Maxwell House is appetizing, rich, full-bodied, and mellow. Coffee that's full-flavored best. Good to the last drop. But Bill, you, you might get a fractured skull. 
Can't they hire an actor to double for you? One who looks just like you? Well, no, Gracie. Gable's busy. <laughs> Besides, there's a close-up, you see, where Lana Turner kisses the lumps on my head. Th that's when I realize I love her. So I tell her what she's been waiting to hear. You mean... Yeah, that more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Oh, Bill, even Lana Turner can't make you forget Maxwell House. Never. Well, here's the circus lot, Bill. Will you come in with me, Gracie, or would you rather get home to George? Oh, well, I do enjoy seeing freaks. Oh, rather get home to George, huh? <laughs> oh, no, no, I mean, I want to come in with you. Oh, well, you can leave the car parked right here, uh, beside these bales of hay. Oh, look, Bill, here comes some elephants. Yeah. Hey, I guess they're after this hay. My, that one's getting awfully close to the car. Oh, well, there's nothing to worry about. They're very tame, Gracie. Get away. Get away. Hey, shoo, elephant. Shoo, get away. Get away. Oh, Bill, the elephant sat on my fender. <laughs> George home. My only chance is that he didn't see the car. Gracie! Hello, dear. Do you know what I'm doing? I I'm knitting you a sweater. Isn't that nice? Because my darling and handsome husband should have a sweater to cover his glorious brawny chest, shouldn't he? Uh, so I'm knitting you a sweater. You saw the car, I saw huh? the car, yeah. <laughs> Gracie, what happened to that fender? And remember, I want the truth. The absolute truth. The truth? Yes. All right. Well, I would... I'd rather not discuss it, Judge. I want to know exactly what happened. All right. I happened to park... Oh, no, Judge. Some other time. Gracie, I want the truth. Well, if I tell you the truth, you won't believe it. I certainly will believe it. How much you want to bet? <laughs> Gracie, what happened to the fender? An elephant sat on it. <laughs> that broken down story again. Now, you see, I told you. Ah, uh, don't give me that. Honest, George, that's what happened. Oh, stop. Now, let's have the truth. What actually happened? Well, all right. I was driving up a one-way street the wrong way, and I stopped to look a hat in a stall window, and a bus hit me in the fender. That's more like it. That I believe. <laughs> I see. Now, have you learned your lesson? I certainly have. In the future, I'll know just what to do. That a girl. <laughs> Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Say, Gracie, did you hear Hedda Hopper the other night? She said some very nice things about us on our program. Oh, yes, she took her hat off to us, and I think that we ought to take our hats off to Hedda Hopper. So do I. Good. Give me $20. What for? Well, after I take this one off, I'll need a new one. Good night, folks. Good night. <laughs> Goody, goody, jello pudding tonight. It tastes like grandma's, only more so. You ain't kidding, that's right. And, and just, just as jello, jello, six delicious locked in flavors can't be beaten. So the proof of jello pudding's in the eating. The jello twins are hard to find, but keep on looking in your store. When sugar shortages are over, there'll be more. Just the taste of jello pudding, or of jello, and you know it's the one and only J E L L O. Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. And now stay tuned to this station because Bird's Eye Open House, starring Dinah Shore, is coming on in just a second. Dinah's special guest tonight is Groucho Marx. Good night. <laughs> this is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.